Welcome to lesson three of module two. In this lesson, we're gonna be talking about some of the critical design and construction considerations that you need to be thinking about when working with exterior rigid insulation, as it does change a few things, especially with regards to how we attach our materials, uh, install our cladding materials and trim, you know, what type of fasteners we need to use. And so this lesson is dedicated to addressing all of those things. The next few lessons will be talking about some more niche applications such as round windows um, and with certain cladding types that aren't siding or your traditional uh, panelized siding. So without further ado, let's get into it. So sequencing matters a lot in any wall assembly or building assembly, but especially if you're using exterior rigid insulation. On the right here, we have an image of what's called the perfect wall. Um, this was coined by Joe Stebrook from Building Science Corporation. And the whole idea is that we have our water, air, and sometimes vapor control layer on the outside. We also have our thermal control layer on the outside and our cladding and our drainage gap. And so by locating all of the control layers on the outside of the assembly, uh, we eliminate the potential for condensation within the wall assembly. We have better durability of our waterproofing materials. And if there is any you know, incidental air leakage or if there are imperfections in the way that these materials were installed, the consequences aren't nearly as dire because the wall can dry basically to the interior unimpeded. And so this perfect wall is somewhat aspirational. Um, you know, there's a ton of variations of this perfect wall. Obviously it's very expensive to install all of your rigid insulation outboard and have no insulation on the interior, although it is preferable in certain situations. But, um, you know, we don't want that rigid insulation to be installed behind the WRB. We want it in front of the WRB. So if condensation forms on the backside of the rigid insulation, we don't want it to migrate into the sheathing. You know, if we had an airtight WRB in front of the insulation, we could see moisture accumulation behind the WRB around the insulation seams. We want that condensation to hit the surface of our weather resistive barrier and drain down and out. We want our WRB also to be our air control layer or air barrier, and we want the air barrier to be located behind the rigid insulation. This is very important. If it's warm and humid outside, for example, and we have cool conditioned air on the inside, and that warm moisture laden air is trying to get inside, it's stopped by the water and air control layer and we get condensation. But the condensation is on the outside of the WRB, so it doesn't matter. On the flip side of that, if we have warm moisture laden air on the interior that is trying to come into contact with the sheathing, well, that sheathing is sufficiently warmed by all that insulation, granted that you use the right ratios. So um, even if we are operating at a slightly higher relative humidity, which normally would cause condensation, our dew point is shifted. And we've already talked about that in previous lessons. And so interior vapor control doesn't really matter if you use the right proportion of exterior rigid insulation. Again, it's highly dependent on the interior relative humidity that you're operating under. Now, we also want a ventilated drainage gap to be provided between the cladding and the rigid insulation outboard. This is also called a rain screen. And what this provides is some ventilation drying as well as drainage so that any water that happens to leak behind the cladding is drained out or dries out. And also, you know, you have to attach your cladding to something. So it's serving all these purposes. And um, especially when we have thicker layers of rigid insulation, it's a must if you have something like traditional siding. Now, the beauty of the perfect wall is that it can work in any climate with any insulation. You know, on the left here, we have a CMU wall that has been insulated on the outside with some uh, extruded polystyrene. There's a fluid applied water and air control layer, and then we can attach any kind of cladding material to that. And then we have an uninsulated cavity for MEP services. Same thing with the wall assembly in the middle. We have steel framing with a drainable self-adhered weather resistive barrier, a couple layers of polyiso insulation. The reason why we want it to be drainable is because rigid foam typically is quite smooth. And if we are pressing that in direct contact with the WRB, and it's not drainable, it can hold water in tension if it gets in. And believe me, water finds a way. You might not think it does, but it always finds a way into that layer, albeit not that much. And then we have, you know, our cladding material over that. Um, the cladding is attached with uh, vertical hat channels. So those get, you know, attached into the studs and that's our uh, fastening base for the cladding. And then on the uh, right here, we have the perfect wall with wood framing, 
We have a self-adhered or fluid-applied weather-resistive barrier. That's our water and air control layer. Two layers of rigid mineral wool, stagger and offset joints. Um, that would be an excellent assembly for any residential project. And you may want to insulate within the cavities to provide some fire resistance, but apart from that, that wall would work exceptionally in almost any climate. Now, as we mentioned before, you can combine the rigid insulation with some cavity insulation, given that it's installed at the proper ratio. And we went over the ratios again in previous lessons, um, but those ratios are there to prevent condensation. They're not necessarily there only for energy efficiency. They are primarily there for condensation control. And so the idea is that you're reducing the amount of condensation hours by installing the, uh, the insulation outboard. You need more insulation outboard depending on the climate zone that you're building in. Colder climates obviously require a higher ratio of outboard insulation. And having two layers of rigid insulation is much better than just having one with the joints staggered and offset. And that basically reduces any heat loss at those seams where you might actually have um, some cold spots. So if we have some rigid, another layer of rigid insulation covering those seams, it's going to improve the performance of that insulation layer. And of course, our WRB is serving as our water and air control layer. We prefer self-adhered or fluid applied WRBs for the reason that it can provide a monolithic water and air control layer on our sheathing or wall surface and basically it doesn't allow any water or air to travel freely behind uh, the WRB and the substrate that it's being installed on. So something that we've noticed is that with house wraps if water does get behind there for whatever reason it happens basically water travels behind that building wrap and it's not a localized leak, it's, it's actually spreading out all over. So the benefit of a fluid applied or self-adhered or integrated WRB system is that one, it's very airtight or has the potential to be very airtight. And two, if there is a leak or an improper flashing, that leak is gonna be very localized. So because it's bonded to that sheathing material, because it's bonded to that substrate, that water really isn't going anywhere.